Well, hello, my baby gorillas. And as I'm getting tired of looking at myself, and I'm sure you are, I thought I would just do something that doesn't involve me on the camera. So, we have something that's very important and just now very topical. Uh, the day that uh, Paul Hutchinson did the smear article in me in the front cover of the Daily Record, funnily enough, the Manchester report on grooming gangs came out as well. What a coincidental uh, timing that was. And this seemed to, like, my story seemed to have knocked off a much more important story, and that is the Labour Party's cover-up of the grooming gangs. So I thought we would actually cover it, and more importantly, the requirement for an investigation at the highest levels uh, into whether or not Gordon Brown, the former Prime Minister, actually covered up the Muslim rape gangs, which is exactly what they were. So, has this gone to the top of the Labour Party? Let's find out. So, I put in, in the search engine, uh, Gordon Brown covered up grooming. And the top one is from www.politicalite.com and it's Labour's cover-up of Gordon Brown's government. And this is uh, an article regarding Gordon Brown and the Labour Party in power uh, back in, well, uh, this, I think, goes back to about 2008. And what it is, is that the Labour Party, who held seats where these uh, Muslim child uh, rape gangs were um, actually functioning, was actually covered up by the Labour Party at the senior level. So the local level covered up the Muslim rape gangs at the bequest of the then Prime Minister, allegedly. And this is why we need an investigation, uh, a public investigation at the highest or at the highest level to be televised so we can find out if Gordon Brown covered up the Muslim rape gangs. So here we have, uh, this is called Politica Light and Labour cover up Gordon Brown's government urge police not to investigate uh, Muslim grooming gangs, well Muslim rape gangs. And obviously there's a picture of Gordon Brown. So let's see what they've actually said. Gordon Brown Labour government, uh, sorry, Gordon Brown's Labour government allegedly urged police forces across the UK not to investigate grooming gangs. The former North West Chief Prosecutor alleged that the Home Office ordered police to ignore grooming gangs' claims in 2008. Now, this ties in with what uh, investigations being stopped halfway through, um, perpetrators being let go, not pro non pro proper investigations being put forward at this time, and uh, if the the then former the then prime minister now former prime minister has actually covered up this, he may be required to be investigated and have some sort of formal charges placed upon him. Uh, there, there has been numerous documentation on several police forces that uh, this came from the highest level and that uh, this was to be ignored. So, uh, Nasser Azal uh, told the BBC that in 2008 the Home Office the Home Office sent a, a circular email to all police forces 
uh, calling on them to not investigate the sexual exploitation of young English girls in towns and cities across the UK by Muslim rape gangs. Uh, speaking in the Channel 4 PM programme, Mr uh, Afzal, uh, the former North West prosecutor who uh, reserved a Crown Prosecution Service decision and successfully prosecuted the notorious Rochdale uh, gang said, you may not know this, but back in 2000, in tw uh, 2008, the Home Office sent a, a circular to all police forces in the country saying as far as these young girls uh, who are being exploited in towns and cities, we uh, believe that uh, they have made an informed choice to have se underage sex. Now, there's statutory laws that people shouldn't be having sex with people under 18, oh, sorry, under 16 in the, the UK. And uh, th these are obviously not being enforced. Um, and th th this has just been let go. So uh, we believe uh, that they have made an informed choice about their sexual uh, behaviour and therefore it is not for uh, you police officers to get involved. Underage children um, not being involved, the social services being told to step down from the Labour Party bigwigs in uh, Westminster and they have to step down uh, at a local level. Social securities didn't do their job properly, uh, the police didn't do their job properly and this, uh, this is on the back of the local authority who was also Labour and being told by um, Gordon Brown the then Prime Minister through the Home Office through his whoever it was at the time in 2008 uh, the Home Office Secretary in the Labour Party so this is a massive massive cover up by the Labour Party let's hear uh, Mr uh, Af Afsal actually speak on uh, regards to this let's actually see let's hear what exactly what he said So, it looks like there has to be a, an investigation. So, oh, the Home Secretary was Jackie Smith. So, Jackie Smith and Gordon Brown have to be investigated by probably a, a third party. And actually, we'll see if they have any um, legal questions to answer because I think this is potentially criminal in uh, the actions that are actually have actually been taken uh, by the, the government at that time. So that, that's very uh, questionable, whether or not there's actual um, potential criminal charges uh, to Mr Brown and Ms. Ms. Smith or Mrs Smith um, if there was a public investigation, after there's a pu been a public investigation. So let's... Uh So I found it very interesting what Majid said because Majid is uh, quite a liberal type of guy and he was on LBC discussing the grooming gang. So from the top down, the, the Gordon Brown has covered this up. Don't forget Tony Blair was very instrumental in the open borders uh, and brought in a lot of the issues that had actually had actually, actually had arisen. So let's listen to Majid uh, accuse a caller of being in denial about the Muslim child rape gangs. The first one to be exposed in 2014, an inquiry found in Rotherham there were more than 1,400 victims, 1,400 victims 
of grooming and sex, sexual exploitation between 97 and 2013. That's just in one town. But it gets worse, Daniel. Then it happened in Rochdale. And then uh, in Rochdale, uh, they found uh, that uh, uh, basically sentences were given up to 19 years because of crimes committed against girls between the age of 13 and 15 in and around Rochdale between 2008 and 2010. Then there was a case in Oxford in 2013 uh, where five uh, Muslim men uh, were convicted and handed sentences at the Old Bailey uh, for... Beth Gordon Brown has actually covered this up. This is given them carte blanche to do what they like. They've had the social security, social services who were meant to be protecting the welfare stand down. The police stand down. The Labour councils are liable. The the Gordon Brown and Jackie Smith are liable and they, they, they should be prosecuted. There should be an external investigation and they should be potentially prosecuted if these allegations are found to have actually happened. Pakistani origin, uh, except for two who were North African, also Muslim. Then it was in Bristol, where 13 Somali Muslim men were jailed for more than a total of uh, 100 years after they were convicted in 2014 of running an inner city sex ring. Then in Aylesbury, six South Asian men were jailed in 2015 um, for uh, grooming underage white girls between 2006 and 2012. Then in Peterborough, a total of 10 men were convicted of child sex crimes in the town. Uh, um, and the boss, uh, Muhammad Khobeib, who was originally from Pakistan, he was jailed for 13 years at the Old Bailey after he was found guilty of forcing a 14-year-old girl to perform a sex act on him. And then Newcastle, and Daniel, you know what? It's too depressing to carry on. It goes on no, and no, on. No, no, one thing, one second, Daniel. The pattern in all of these, overwhelmingly, is South Asian Muslim men, primarily Pakistani, sometimes Somali Muslims, sometimes North African Muslims. It doesn't help us, Daniel, to pretend this wasn't a phenomenon that was replicated across the country. What I would advise you, you said you're a South Asian Muslim man, therefore your name probably is Daniel or something other than Daniel. I would advise you to address this topic head on and not pretend it's not a national phenomenon because I guarantee you that anger will rise if you come on radio and pretend this is not a national problem. I'm not, I'm not here pretending in any way, buddy. I'm not here pretending in any way. I just wanted to make sure, like, and the statistics they showed me is right. But at the same time, okay, the pockets and areas that you suggested, okay, if you if you follow national statistics in regards to the PDP again, nationally, when I say I'm talking Great Britain, not just thing, right? Great Britain, right? The biggest the biggest problem that we have PDP, and it's been spotted, and it comes in it comes in small patterns, and then it goes away and fades away, right? Which is which is basically mentioning the Catholic Church, which is mentioning basically the person itself with racist problems, okay? Where it's not just fifteen girls there, twenty girls there. You're doing the and same that. thing again because you said I'm yeah. not denying these facts, but and then your but no 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 to see the majority of representation in any crime to be by white people, because we're living in a majority white country. What is concerning is if pockets of our country, communities like ours, Daniel, yours and mine, are disproportionately involved in any one type of crime. That's dis that disproportionate number raises questions about our attitudes, our meaning British Pakistani men, our attitudes towards the rest of society, and whether we have a Muslim supremacist attitude. One of the defendants in this case, you know, Daniel, you know, I'm sorry you're not going to like hearing this stuff, but the truth doesn't necessarily care about your feelings. One of the main defendants in trial argued that it's his religious right to have sex with underage girls, and that was his defense. Look it up, Daniel. It is unbelievable, and you and I know that that kind of argument gets bandied about. You and I know, if you don't believe me again, look it up, that in Pakistan, you're in my country of origin, where our parents are from, when they tried to raise the age of uh, sex, sexual consent, it was shot down by the ideological council of guarding uh, Islamic culture in Pakistan, shot down in parliament, and deemed blasphemous for trying to raise the age of consent. Because religion gets involved, culture gets involved. We've got to be able to have this conversation without being in denial, Daniel. Oh, no, no, I'm not in denial in any way. And you I sound like you are. Yeah. No, 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 no. 
So that was very interesting. Let's just look at this other uh, YouTuber. I hope you, the guys don't mind me using this. Uh, they, they've both done very well. So let's look at David Wood. He's a very interesting uh, fellow who does critical uh, thought and intellectual thought on Islam and what actually happens uh, in the Quran. So this is quite an interesting. Muhammad, obviously the prophet of Islam, like Jesus, um, uh, is to Christians. Although very different people, Muhammad being a warlord and Jesus being a sort of wee Jewish hippie. Um, this is a very interesting one in conjunction with uh, the Muslim rape gangs in the UK. Uh, where, where does it say, what sort of text does it say? So when you click on David Wood, Muhammad gets caught with his sexual slave girl. Muhammad's wife Hafsa once caught him in bed with another, caught him in her bed with another woman, his slave girl married the cop. Uh, he, didn't, he wanted to avoid conflict, so he promised... So uh, you might have missed that there, so let me just go back. Mary, the Coptic Christian. So Muhammad, the Muslim, was raping the non-Muslim and had the non-Muslim as the sex slave, Egyptian sex slave. Uh, he, didn't, he wanted to avoid conflict, so he promised that he would stop having sex with Mary. Uh, but later he received a revelation telling him not to. So he takes a vow that he's not going to have sex with his slave girl anymore. He makes a vow, he promises Hafsa and Aisha that he's not going to do this anymore. And then a revelation of the Quran comes, chapter 66, verses 1 through 2. O Prophet, why do you forbid yourself that which Allah hath made lawful for you? You seek to please your wives, and Allah is forgiving, merciful. Allah indeed has sanctioned for you the expiation of your oaths, and Allah is your protector, and he is the knowing wise. So Muhammad receives the revelation, and the revelation tells him it's okay to break his oath to his wives about, having, about not having sex anymore with his slave girl. Now at, at this point, it, it just becomes very difficult to accept what Muhammad is saying about someone who came six centuries earlier. I might believe Muhammad if he's talking about what ha what's happening during his time or something like that. But when he's talking about six centuries earlier, it becomes very difficult to take him seriously as getting revelations from God. So too with the story of Hassan and the slave girl. So, uh, basically, the, the Muhammad was basically a sexual slave trader. Um, Aisha was only was, I think, I'm not sure if the Aisha was actually Muhammad's cousin, certainly uh, he, Muhammad recommended ma first, curry, first cousin marriage, um, and that's why a lot of inbreeding in the Arabic world has left to deformities and other things, even from the BBC in Bradford, that uh, because people are having sex with their cousins, it's leading to a massive number of uh, def people or children being brought up with deformities. So, there is text for um, this and for having sex with children and for having sex, especially Muslims having sex with no, with uh, children of non-Muslims, uh, including Sikhs and things like that as well. So, I mean, it's a very uh, worrying t doctrine that has been covered up by the Labour Party. And the reason that, that they've covered it up, Gordon Brown covered it up, is because of Tony Blair's open door immigration policy where they put a lot of British people out onto the streets. Um, so th we have to have a, a public investigation into it. It has to be televised. And we have to actually cover um, what's actually been taught in the mosque. Um, some, some of these cases were saying that there was actually the imams that were calling uh, white women trash and making ra uh, racially der derogative terms towards uh, these uh, for, for these children. Um, and allowing the Muslims to actually go out and perpetrate this. We've obviously, obviously seen 50 failed mass murder attempts by Muslims, uh, with the source being the BBC, foiled attempts in 7-7. I think it's probably more than that now. So these are all things that we have to start looking into. And uh, persecution of homosexuals, persecution of uh, people who are apostates. Uh, we have to support ex-Muslims as well. So these are all things that have to happen just now. We have to be start to have an overview and look at what's actually happening in our society because there's a lot of bad things actually happening. I hope that's um, uh, been of interest. Sorry if there's any copyright issues there, guys. I thought the stuff that 
each one of you had said was very interesting and illuminating and on the money. It's about time you stop covering things up and actually address the underlying issues.